broadcasting the good news of Jesus Christ to North America and people around the world. We welcome you to TCT Alive. Our faithful prayer partners are here to take your important calls. So join us today for an inspirational time of interview and song. TCT Alive. Now, here's your host. Hello, thank you for joining us on TCT Live. I want you to sit down, get comfortable, because we have a great program for you today. I'm going to introduce our special guest in just a second, but right now I want to remind you, call that number on your screen, 1-800-232-9855 is your number for prayer. We have prayer partners standing by in our studio today, as well as our uh, stations all across the nation to take your call, pray for you, whatever your need may be, and uh, get those calls in now because at the end of the program, we want to take the prayer requests that have come in and pray over your needs. But right now, I want to introduce to you our very special guest, John Burton. You've been developing ministries for over 20 years, um, authored many books, been on uh, Christian radio and television. In fact, our viewers may recognize you from uh, the Detroit studio. I know your church now is located there, and uh, you've come in and done many things with us uh, there. Our station manager, Bob, called me to let us know that you were in the area and that you were someone that we really needed to connect with. So thank you for coming out today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. You know, we're, uh, we're here in Cleveland, and uh, uh, God's just opening some cool doors, and I think this is a, this is a great one. And, you know, my heart's just to get the Get the message of fire out there. I think revival's coming, but we got to grab hold of it, and so that's what I'm all about, but I'm thrilled. This is going to be great. Definitely, yeah, and I know you're here uh, preaching a revival and uh, actually helping us get connected. You're coming in from Detroit, but introducing us to some pastors we haven't yet connected with here in the Cleveland area, so that's just uh, great to get a chance to meet with you and uh, do that. So tell me a little bit about the focus of your ministry. I know you, you travel a lot, speak of revivals and that sort of thing. What's kind of the key focus of what you do? Right, yeah, it's, uh, you know, my heart is, is uh, it's, it's encounter, um, but it's also, it's encounter based on the Word of God. You know, we, I think today we have to be careful because uh, there's so much opportunity for, uh, you know, for, for, for encounter. I mean, the enemy would love to encounter us. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I think we need to get back to the cross. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to the blood of Jesus. And from that place, man, the power is just phenomenal. You know, we, uh, you know my ministry, uh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is just that. I mean, it's, it's introducing people to the fire of God, to the truth of, the, the truth of God, which, you know, the Bible talks about the rhema. You know, mm -hmm. when we, you ever open the Bible and it's just kind of dry and it falls in your lap and it's, nothing's happening, but all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just kind of sprinkles something on it and boom, you know, the explosion yeah. happens and that rhema happens. You know, that's the truth that we need to get, get back to. And so when we trust the Word of God, when we believe the Word of God, when we, when, we, when we go after God as He truly is, I mean, the Bible says, I was preaching this last night, I mean, there's lightning coming out of His face. He's got arrows, you know, that He's shooting. I mean, He's like, He's, he's cool. He's yeah. amazing. He's powerful. And, and uh, there's thunderings. And, you know, that's the God that I serve. And so, so my heart is to just, just introduce Jesus and for me, I'm just getting, getting to know him better and better and better and better myself. I'm hungering more than I ever have in my life. And so my encounters, I release, I release that to other people, hungry people. And that's what, it, that's what it is. That's great. Well, you know, I think that's important, as you said, to, to keep striving for it, hunger after it. Um, but you also said, you know, a lot of times when we pull open the Bible, it's just kind of dry. I think a lot of times... Um, you know, you talk about all these characteristics of God, about how he's a, a alive and powerful God. And, and sometimes uh, in our day-to-day -day walk, it can kind of seem that uh, he doesn't have the same power that we read about in the stories of the Bible. And, and we, we pray to God, we go to church and stuff like that, but we don't really let him come alive in our lives and through us. How would you say that we could... Um, I guess, encourage people to uh, really pick that up and really let God become alive in their lives. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm like, I'm like you. I mean, yeah. I, read, I read, here we are in the New Covenant, right? Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, Holy Spirit comes, fire on, on their heads. I mean, God, and, but look at the Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. Think about the Old Covenant stuff, the splitting of the sea and the earth opening up and, you know, water coming out of a rock and, you know, Jordan River splitting. I mean, just dramatic miracles and wonders. And where is that today? I yeah. mean, we're on the other side of the cross. 
And I sit here thinking about, about that, and I'm like, my, my God, where, where is the great power of, of, God, of God today? I'll share with you just one, um, to, to really answer your question, um, uh, one story, uh, something that happened to me. I was at the International House of Prayer in Kansas City. It's a, it's a prayer ministry, 24-7 yeah. ministry of, of intercession, and uh, directed one of the internships there. And I was in the prayer room one day, and, and God said, uh, uh, open your Bible, I want you to read something. I, I read out of Deuteronomy where it says, you, the, the, the passage we've heard so many times, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Mm -hmm. And it's in, it's in different places in Scripture, and I opened to that one partic in particular. And, um, um, and I read that, it says, and basically, I command you uh, 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 to do that. And I'm thinking, okay, well, well that's interesting. And uh, you, you command me to, okay, I get that. God's commanding me to be loving. He's commanding me to do nice things. He's commanding me to, to, to you know, love the, the, the homeless and the hungry and my brothers. And, and, uh, and he said, no, 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 I want you to read it again. And I'm like, I read it again. And I'm like, okay, I think I get it. I really think I get it. Thanks, God. I'm on, I'm on board with that. Okay. And he said, no, I'll read it again. So then I went into the Hebrew, okay. which I love to do that. Yeah. And the word love is actually a word, you know, we've heard agape and phileo and the different types of love, uh, words for love. This one is, was different. I've never heard of it before. It's the word A-H-A-B. I believe it's pronounced ahab. And I looked that up, and it, it means to be intimate, to have intimate affection for. And God said, now read it again. I command you to have intimate affection for me. Then I didn't get it. Okay, yeah. wait a minute, God. I understand that I can act loving. I understand yeah. I can do. How can you command me to have an intimate affection. How do you do that? That's, that's emotional. Mm -hmm. And I wrestled with that, and I'm like, that, that's insane. And he, what he was doing is he was revealing himself to me in yeah. a powerful new way. And I said, God, how can you command me to, be, to, have, to have intimacy, to, to be affectionate? How can you do that? And I just felt him smile, and he said, John, I am so confident of my ability to woo you that I'm commanding you to take one step in my direction. You draw near to me, I will draw near to you. One step, I command you to take one step. And the intimacy and the affection that I have for you is absolutely going to blow your mind. And that is an example of, the, of just the dry word where you think you got yeah. it. Exploding. And that, that passage has changed my life forever. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it's the Holy Spirit. That's, that's an incredible story. You know, I... I, uh, along those lines of kind of God having that type of relationship with us, and we hear that a lot, you know, that it's about a relationship with Christ and that sort of thing, but, uh, you know, I've, I've heard people talking about even something like uh, praying to God about the line in the grocery store <laughs> that they get the right one or something like that, something that seems so small, and you think, you know, God is the God of the entire world, has billions of people to look after, but when we have that relationship with him, it, it is that intimate kind of relationship to where he cares so much about not only us as individuals, but even the individual things of our life. And that's just yep. great to unlock that. Oh, it's amazing. Can I share a story with Absolutely. you? Absolutely. This will open it wide, up, wide open here. When uh, I, I pastored a Revolution Church in Manitou Springs, Colorado okay. for several years, I planted the church, led it. And it's a very, very dark city. I've shared about it, I believe, on TCT before. Um, it's uh, one, of the, one of the darkest cities in the nation. The Satanic Bible, we believe, was written from there, at least mm. in part. Um, Anton LaVey lived there. A lot of witchcraft, a lot of, a lot of, the, of the occult. And um, so we were there, and I felt the Holy Spirit. And this, again, we're talking about the Holy Spirit speaking to us in such a way where it changes things. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, I want you to have a prayer event at City Hall. Now, this is a small town, okay, yeah. at the, right at the base of Pikes Peak. And so I, 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 I set that into motion, and I sent big uh, bright red postcards to every house and every business in Manitou Springs with the big uh, word, uh, pray. And I explained that we're having a prayer event on City Hall. Well, my, my purpose was not just to have a prayer event, but it, was to, it honestly was to provoke the city to into a place of understanding that the kingdom of God is advancing there. And so I was expecting some, some flack. Well, mm -hmm. it started to come in. Emails were coming in. I'm not happy that you're doing this. Uh, separation of church and state. This should not be happening. You know, leave Manitou Springs. Go back to Colorado Springs. You know, we don't want you here kind of a thing. And many, many, many emails. Well, then they started to become templated, meaning the same template. Yeah. And people are putting their names on the bottom. Okay. So now it's organized. Yeah. And, well, then I read one. It was one of the templated ones. And... Um, and it was signed by a person, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. 
And he said something very, very strange. And he said, I'm going to get one more senior than her. Okay. Okay, just like that. You're just you're confused. I'm, I was confused yeah. as well. You're I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get one more senior than her. I'm like, okay. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. I agreed with it. Left it alone. Didn't know what it meant. The day for the event came, and before the actual prayer event, we had a prayer meeting, and I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me as we were all just walking around the room praying, and He said, uh, John, something like this. I'm going to start. I'm going to visit people in the night tonight. It was real clear. I'm like, that's cool. So I just keep praying. Someone comes up to me and says, John, I just had this word that tonight, that there's gonna be a visitation of some sorts uh, in the city. I'm like, that's very interesting. I said, okay, let's just keep praying on this. Right after that, someone else comes over and says, John, in homes tonight, God, God is, Jesus is going to visit somebody. I'm like, okay. So I gathered everybody together. I said, guys, this is what God said three times now, yeah. and we're gonna pray on this. So we prayed on it, and then we had the event, and the event was led uh, by myself, and then there was another pastor there. The other pastor wasn't in this pre-prayer service, so she didn't know any of this stuff that was going on. We had the prayer event. I was waiting for picketers. I was waiting for who knows what was going to happen. Nothing yeah. happened. It was easy. The next morning, I got a phone call from the other pastor. Okay. And she said, John, it's already started. I'm like, oh, no, what's happened? And, um, and, and, and by the way, I forgot to fill this in. That individual that sent me the email, I, I Googled her, mm -hmm. discovered that she'd been a witch in Manitou Springs for 22 years. Wow. A witch for 22 years. Now, so now remember, God says, I'm going to get one more senior than mm -hmm. her. So we have a witch of 22 years coming against what, what's happening here. So the, so the, the pastor calls. She says, uh, it's already started. I said, what's going on? She said, I got a phone call. And I said, what happened? She says, you're not going to believe it. I'm like, What'd you, what, what happened? She said, I got a phone call from a man. She said, John. Last night, he was in his bedroom, and he was suddenly awakened, and standing by his bed was Jesus. Wow. She said that he had not been in church his entire life, and he didn't know who to call, and our church was the first church that he could find, and he called our church, and, and I said, that's amazing. Now, remember, she didn't know anything about yeah. what God had revealed to us, and, and she, said, she said, and he reached out and touched him, and when he did, he was filled with love, and he will never be able to doubt Jesus again. Wow. And I'm like, that's absolutely crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. And she said, John, there's, there's more. And I said, really, there's more? She said, he told me that he had been a senior-ranking witch for 50 years. And the moment she said that, God spoke to me, and he said, I told you wow. I was going to get one more senior than her, more senior than the yeah. witch of 22 years. That's, a, that's incredible. It's insane. Absolutely crazy. And, you know, and we've experienced remarkable things like this in our ministry. I mean, many, I've written, uh, I've written eight books. I've, I've, I've shared a lot of these stories. God continues to do things. I'm humbled. I'm like, what in the world is going on? But God is on the move. He's doing things. His heart is just crying out for revival and for people. And I'm ready for this kind of stuff. That is absolutely incredible. Now, I want to uh, ask you, for people watching right now that may want to have you in their church or something like that, uh, what is the website or what, how can they contact you for speaking engagements and that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm traveling most of the time now. God has taken me through a really important shift, and I'm, I'm trying to be on the road about 75% of the time, and I'll go anywhere. God told me uh, there, you know, to, to tell everybody, no minimum, minimum honorarium, no minimum size crowd, and my heart is just to go. And so you can go to johnburton.net. And uh, you can uh, fill out a booking form there. Contact me directly. I'll talk with you and see what God's doing. But uh, I'm ready. I'm, my calendar is just loading up fast, you know, just suddenly through the, re through the rest of the year. And uh, I'm just carrying revival. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a carrier of fire, yeah. and I'm ready. Well, that's great, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to say that. But I want to go back just a second to uh, when you were in Colorado and, and in, you know, ministering in this town that has such a um, strong occult influence and, and the fact that a witch of 50 years had an actual encounter with Jesus and, and was able to turn his life around, that's incredible. But tell me what it's like for you as a minister through that um, and, and what it was like. I mean, I know dealing with the letters and things coming against you, but, but what is it like ministering in a town that has such a strong satanic influence? Man, you know, we would need probably two weeks to yeah. talk about this. Uh, it, it's, it's absolutely unlike, uh, uh, you know, anything that a typical church would, would experience. Uh, and the reason I say that is you have to change your paradigm 
to, to minister like that. And I think all of us need to change our paradigm because these types of things are going to come more to the forefront. I was just yeah. in Haiti preaching there, and man, God was breaking out. But the voodoo, the, the, the demonic influence there is just incredible. But it reminds me of Manitou Springs. And, and so you have to be, boy, we have, you know, I had to be continually humbling myself, checking my heart. I had to be aggressively in the place of prayer. I mean, insane levels. I mean, just, and, and I love it. It's, yeah. not a, it's not a complaint. I love yeah. it. Being in the place of prayer. I had to actually believe the Bible instead of, instead of wrestling so much, wondering maybe why things aren't happening. I had to just believe it and be determined that, and declare it and decree it. Um, I had to have uh, intercessors around me, very important, you know, people that were uh, holding up the ministry. I mean, there's so much um, because there was a lot of flack. I mean, yeah. it, some of the things, I mean, I received emails from as far away as Egypt when they would hear wow. about the things that were going on there and they were disturbed by it. They didn't appreciate it. They didn't, they didn't like it. Um, and, you know, I've received, you know, uh, emails from uh, the Masonic, uh, uh, they call him the worshipful master, the leader there, uh, emails from uh, just all over the place, all different types of people, very disturbed. And all we're doing is praying. You know, we need, I need you all to understand that. I'm not one, you know, we can't be rude and inappropriately aggressive. And we need to love. I mean, yeah. we need to have a heart of love. So we weren't doing much of anything but praying. That's our ministry is prayer. We're praying, we're praying boldly, praying with humility. And what happens is, is something happens in the spirit where all the way over in Egypt, there's there's a there's a you know, there's there's something going on where they're picking up. There's a disturbance in yeah. the force, right? And uh, and so you just have to be you have to be ready. You have to be alert. Well, Quiet. you know, when you're talking about that, and and I mean, from Egypt, them hearing about a prayer meeting in, in Colorado and all that, and it makes me think of just so many things uh, in the world in this country. Um, and Christianity seemed to be under attack, and, and things of the Bible, um, you know, not being sociably acceptable. It seems so many things, you know, it, it's almost uh, like people try and make it shameful to be a Christian. And yet you look at the polls, and you see that, you know, we're st still by far a, a vastly Christian nation and, and things like that. Um, what would you, I mean, how can we get a connectedness like that between all these people that claim to be Christians, that, that believe in God, that, that want to um, positively affect the world, and yet, you know, you have a small group that have, that can come together from across the world, Egypt to Colorado. How can we have that same type of connectedness to be able to reach our world? Yeah, I'm going to give you a real simple answer, and uh, it's prayer meetings. Yeah. Um, um, it sounds so boring. Boy, that's a yeah. boring answer. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's legit. You know, when, when I was in Colorado Springs, every, mi uh, every Friday night from 10 to midnight, uh, we would pray uh, in the spirit on fire uh, for two hours. Yeah. And we, I mean, it was, in, and we were in over 100 churches in Colorado Springs. We did, we did the same thing in Detroit. We've been in over 70 churches in Detroit. And our team and others, we just show up, we start praying. There's usually no worship music. There's none of that. No preaching. There's none of that. And we pray, and we pray hardcore. And, and prayer is the greatest calibrator uh, uh, of unity that you will find because it will, it will purge out those that are not truly unified. It will draw together those who are truly the remnant, and they are unified. And um, it's these prayer meetings. I tell leadership teams of churches, if you want to find out who's, who's really with you on your leadership team, uh, develop a, a prayer culture, a fiery prayer culture, because you can't be in a place of prayer in unity uh, if you're not truly unified. And it'll show. It'll show in the way that you pray. And we need to do that on a city level. You know, I've told people in Detroit, I've got some great friends in Detroit, and they're doing amazing things. They're blowing my mind. And, but I'm telling them, for me, you know, I, I don't have a lot of energy for much of anything but coming together and praying. You know, we, I, love, I love conferences. I love events. I speak at them. I, 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 I affirm that. I really do, but uh, I don't know. There's something in me, in me right now where let's minimize some of that other stuff. Let's maximize the prayer and trust. How about, you know, upper room? Do we, should we start there? I think we're not starting at the upper room. It's a prayer meeting. And we're trying to evangelize and do all these things without the upper room. Well, that's great. And, you know, you, when you said that, you said it seems like kind of a boring answer. And I think that so many times uh, prayer can just become... Um, routine in a sense that we're not actively engaging in it you know we'll say our prayer before our meal and 
say a prayer before we go to bed or something like that and not really praying with purpose. Uh, so when you set up these prayer meetings and, and things like that, how, how do you set that up to make it effective in the way you've seen? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not driven by petition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if I could give just one very simple bit of advice, that would be to almost eliminate, not entirely, but almost eliminate petition. You know, don't bring our prayer lists. Gather together, pray in the spirit, you know, uh, uh, just, just let the prophetic, you know, spirit of the Lord just start to burn in us. And then decrees, declarations. I have found way more, if I could use the word success, in, in my prayer life through decrees, declarations, based, and I've written a book on this called, uh, titled uh, Revelation Driven Prayer, where we hear God's voice. We, it, that story I shared is a revelation driven prayer experiment. God reveals what he's doing in the midst of intense prayer uh, or in the, in the midst of even uh, intimate, a place of intimate prayer. And then we respond to that. Instead of just coming to God with our list, here's what the problem is, here's this issue, here's the, you know, you know, Aunt Martha needs a knee replacement, you know, I need some money. It's usually money. God, I need money, you know, I need healing, I need money, I need healing. And, and God already knows this stuff. Yeah. You know, and oftentimes our prayers are doubt-driven, you know. Mm -hmm. God told me one day when I was praying, he said, stop praying. Your prayer's doing damage. And he said, you're praying out of a place of doubt. So, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Uh, the power of life and death's in the tongue. He said, you're releasing doubt. I've already promised to provide all your needs. Why are you begging me? Why are you asking me? And he said, you're doing more damage than good. It'd be better for you not to pray at all. Stop praying because you're releasing doubt through your mouth because you don't believe. You don't have faith. You're, you're praying from doubt instead of faith. Stop. He told me to stop. He said, he said don't, don't, don't start praying again until you come in, can come into agreement with my word. And so pray in the spirit. Build up your faith. Now, in Jesus' name, I command the finances to come together. I bind and I loose. I declare the word of the Lord is true. He has provided all my needs. And, and it absolutely is the way to go. But you've got to pray in the spirit, pray from a, uh, come together from a, a, a place of believing the Bible. That's all faith is. Just believing that is true, having confidence instead of just, oh God, help me, kind of prayers. We've got to stop that. They don't work. People, people quit praying when they pray that way. That's incredible. Now, in addition to praying the right way and having a purposeful prayer, I know you mentioned um, pastors putting together uh, a prayer ministry within their leadership group and that sort of thing. Um, I know you were involved in the International House of Prayer in Kansas City and all the prayer groups you've been talking about. It, for someone that uh, doesn't have that prayer culture in their church or their home or, or whatever the case may be, what would be the first step to getting into that uh, culture of prayer? Yeah, if you're not a senior leader and you're, you want that culture in your church, um, you, need to, you, need, you need to pray because uh, if, if the senior leadership, mm -hmm. if they don't have the vision, it's not going to easily take root. It's, it's a really important principle because a lot of people get very zealous and I'm going to bring this prayer culture to my church and the senior leadership just doesn't have a vision for it. Yeah. It's not going to take root. And so uh, they need to just pray. They need to be faithful. They need to be humble. They need to serve their leadership. Um, see if they can maybe start a prayer meeting, see if the, the leadership will allow that. Uh, but just trust the Lord. God wants this to happen. If you are a senior leadership, cancel everything for a while and do nothing but pray. Well, while we're on the topic of prayer, I, I know I said at the beginning of the program, I want to remind you the prayer number on your screen, 1-800-232-9855. We have prayer partners standing by right now and 24-7, whatever your need may be, as we've been talking about prayer, uh, you know, any of these issues that you've been dealing with. If you want to pray for a prayer culture, maybe you do want to pray to get your church involved in that, please call. We have, as I mentioned, prayer partners standing by that will agree with you in prayer, take your need, take whatever that is to the Lord. But, uh, John, I want to ask you, um, for the people that have called in throughout the program, and, and we may not know the individual needs of everybody, but could you just uh, pray for anybody who's watching right now, anybody who may have called in with a specific need, and uh, let's just go to the Lord and lift them up. Yeah, let's do that. Father, in Jesus' name. Boy, there's a lot of power in that name, God, and I'm asking right now. In fact, I'm declaring that the people that are watching this, this show right this very moment, God, that you are going to provoke them in the spirit. You're going to awaken them to a place of just radical hunger for you. God, they're going to have just this crazy faith just exploding. They're going to go after you like they never have before. I declare in Jesus' name that, that all the hope deferred that makes their heart sick is resolved. Lord, we know that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but faith deferred does not. And Lord, I pray that they would, instead of being 
being driven from this place of hopelessness, that they would believe you, God, that they would be awakened to the reality of, of, of your heart for them. God, I pray, Lord, just as in Deuteronomy, as I shared that earlier, Lord, that they would discover this radical intimacy with you, God. Lord, that they would, they would see you in a way they've never seen you before in their lives. In Jesus' name, let there be burnings in their spirit, God. I declare that there are prayer cultures that are going to be initiated all around the world in Jesus name it's time it's time it's time don't let us go God until we step in to this this call to radical wild prayer that you're calling all of us to God Lord just in Jesus name I speak healing I speak life I declare it in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit just burn in every one of us tonight in this place move God you can do it you're ready you're ready you're not resisting anybody some of you out there maybe you feel like God is resisting you you got to understand that oh my he died for you and he still remembers that moment he remembers that moment when he hung on the cross and he did it for you he's not resisting you it's quite the opposite the enemy tries to lie to you he like God likes you he's zealous about you He's going to make this happen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. And uh, we're almost out of time, but thank you again so much for coming on and uh, sharing with us uh, your ministry. And uh, before we go out, is there one last word that you have for the people watching today? Yeah, just read Joshua 3, 5. It says, uh, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We're waiting for the wonders. He's waiting for the consecration. It's, it's time to do that. Okay, well, that's great. And again, um, for people that may be in the Detroit area or really anywhere that may want to uh, find out more about you or connect with you, maybe have uh, you speak at one of their events or at their church, uh, tell us how they can find out more about you. Yep, go to johnburton.net, and I respond personally to every email, every connection there, fill out the booking form, and uh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm absolutely ready to hit the road and come see you. Okay, great. And I know you mentioned, uh, you've written many books, but I know you uh, mentioned your book on prayer. Are those available at the website as well? They are available at the website and uh, definitely get that book. My latest book is titled The Coming Church. It's a vision for a firestorm from heaven that's coming to the church. Okay, fabulous. Well, go check out the website, johnburton.net. They'll put that on the screen for you as well. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in to TCT Live. I hope you've enjoyed the program and our time of ministry today. And I want to remind you that TCT is a viewer-supported network. If you appreciate programs like this or all the many great Christian programs that we produce and send into your home, your community, and across the nation, please partner with us. You can support TCT by sending a love gift to P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. But do it today, and thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Garth and Tina want you to be a partner in this ministry. Please send your best love gift today to TCT, P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. In Canada, please send your best love gift today to TCT, P.O. Box 1220, Fort Erie, Ontario, L2A 5Y2. This has been a TCT production.